Hey, Dumbsville. I hate to break in for the five millionth time, but I need to borrow some rat poison. I'm getting pretty hungry. Oh, for what? So we can fulfill that obligatory crossover intro quota? Vagina! What the f*** did you just say to me? Oh, and 2D sprites? How original! I'm so glad we can't hire animators, uh, the vagina- I'll slice your nostrils. Stop it. Oh, sorry. I just finished watching Velma. And now I'm influenced by its hysterical use of meta-comedy that I am now satirizing, uh, the vagina. You what? You actually watched that shit? Yes, I did. Well, actually, no, I didn't. I, uh, just watched the trailer. But if it's anything like Rick and Morty, I'm sure the creator will beat his girlfriend. Are you high? Maybe. Wanna watch Velma for money? No. Oh golly gee everyone, it's time for internet variety reviewer number 2029 to review Velma. I mean to be honest, dear god I want those sabers for our numbers. Velma is an HBO Max exclusive adult animated comedy created by Charlie Grandy and the ever transphobic uh, I mean ever funny Mindy Callum who by the way is also the voice of our lead Velma Dinkley. Dear lord, please let this date be good. May he have the wealth of Oh no, Butters, don't expose a celebrity for being a piece of shit. You see, Butters, I'm trying not to get blacklisted by the Hollywood elite yet. The show is based on the Hanna-Barbera classic <laughs> show Scooby-Doo. In the same way that Riverdale is based on Archie and the Nazi party was based on economic problems. It's always a front for something malicious. Now, I gotta be honest, I don't have the biggest attachment to Scooby-Doo. I've seen Mystery Incorporated a few times when I was younger and TBH it kinda slapped. I'm kinda shocked I didn't get more into it. But other than that, I just don't have a childhood attachment like other people do. I did, however, pick up Scooby-Doo Night of a Hundred Frights on the Nintendo GameCube at a flea market once. So in actuality, I am the number one actual Scooby-Doo number one fan, actually. As for me, I really only saw a bit of the older shows and a handful of the movies. I distinctly remember one about zombies, vampires, and one about Scooby and Shaggy teaching some spooky kids how to play volleyball. <laughs> Did you make that last one up? It feels like it, but I don't think so. I remember it pretty clearly. In spite of our histories on Scooby-Doo, or lack thereof, it doesn't exactly take the fucking marriage between a goddamn rocket scientist and a fucking English teacher to understand that Velma is a complete bastardization of the source material. Everyone on YouTube is raving about how garbage this show is and trying to make money off of it. I mean, fuck it, I am too. I ain't above my own goddamn sins. I'll go to church on Sunday. I'll ask for forgiveness. Mom. But it's to the point where it's even rated the number one worst animated show on IMDb. Holy shit. Rightfully so, to be honest. Which means, Butters, that we should jump on this bandwagon before it goes out of style. Think of the views and money. At what cost, though? One billion dollars. Hopefully, for us, adjusted for inflation, or however you would measure that. YouTube does not pay that much. To get a feel for the whole show, we whoa, watched the whoa, first whoa, four whoa, episodes. Whoa, 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 also, it uh, wasn't hey, entirely hey, out hey, yet. And we walked away, uh... Dead inside? Uh, I was thinking suicidal, but that works too. We even recorded our reactions and had to get drunk the first time to numb our pain. Pain, like Max Payne and Max Payne 3. But eventually, that's me! That person drinking? That's me America. watching this shit. This show is a failure in every conceivable. Conceivable? Conceivable. <laughs> this show is a failure in every conceivable way, straight down to the anatomy and basic structure of the entire thing. The writing, the characters, hey, setting, the jokes, flow, premise are all a complete mockery of what Scooby-Doo actually is at its core. And it's not like making a good adult Scooby-Doo show is impossible, especially when a group of people made a oh YouTube parody doing the exact Mystery same thing. thing and it was hilarious. But when you take the core elements of Scooby-Doo, specifically the characters' personalities, roles, and friendship, as as well as Scooby fucking do and remove them? It's no longer Scooby Doo and it's an insult. Zero View fan fiction authors have more adaptive and narrative talent than Mindy Kaling does. And the worst part, it's actually successful. Becoming HBO Max's number one biggest animated show after they deleted all their other animated shows, including Close Enough, another adult animated comedy that was an HBO Max exclusive that people actually liked. To the people hate watching this shit, Especially the ones who somehow liked it. This is 
definitely your fault. Now, I'm not saying you should pirate this show because you shouldn't. In fact, uh, quick PSA time. Hi, my name is Dumbsville. Did you know that it is completely illegal to pirate media? Movies, TV shows, video games, all of it. Completely, insanely illegal to pirate. Even in cases where the show isn't available on a service anymore, like Close Enough, or the game has not been re-released, like Silent Hill 2. Meaning the only way to obtain it without spending hundreds of dollars on a used copy is through piracy, it's still completely illegal to pirate anything. And especially in cases like Velma, where Mindy Cowling has essay allegations against her. Just looming, he was looming above me, yeah. and he asked me a question, I was not listening to him at all, because who cares what he was saying. And I was just like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's still completely illegal to pirate Velma. Wait, Dumbsville, what's with the subtitles and watermarks in some of those episodes you recorded? Oh, I recorded these through piracy to show you what not to do. I'm showing people why you shouldn't watch Velma. I mean, look at the quality. It's downgraded. This problem is completely avoided if you watch these in 4K on HBO Max. You see, it would be completely illegal for me to go to Kiss Cartoons or Kim Cartoons, record the episodes, and watch them that way, which I totally didn't, except in this case, which I'm showing you what not to do. Wait, is that the Bandicam logo? Did you use Bandicam to record this? In fact, I actually do have a subscription to HBO Max, and I totally also legally watch them that way to support the show. Show, of course. <laughs> what would actually furthermore be illegal, though, would be to show you a screenshot of an illegal streaming service here on YouTube. Uh, illegal. Insanely illegal. One thing that is technically legal, though, is to watch The Last of Us instead, I guess. <laughs> Problem number one, the comedy. As you can imagine, the comedy in Velma is really bad. Like, really, really bad. You see, Velma has three types of jokes. Violence, sex, and lazy meta humor. Now, I'm no stick in the mud. Violence and sex are awesome and cool. Mega poggers, for real, for real. Meta humor can be done well. Yeah, like in a high on life. No, not <laughs> like high on life. But the meta humor in Velma, most of the time... No, not most of the time, all of the time. It's the only punchline, and it's not even funny. And if it's not that, the characters get brutally murdered, and that's apparently funny because gratuitous violence. But what I'd consider worse is when they, for quite literally no reason, sexualize these characters who are minor, by the way. And it's not a, oh, look, funny anime boob jiggle. I mean, it's a, let's have a naked shower scene with Daphne and the other chicks within the first two minutes of the first episode. More specifically on Meta, humor, as I've said in previous videos, there is absolutely a right way and a wrong way to do meta humor. In Velma, though, I don't think anyone knows what humor is. Characters just point out their functions or cliches in the show, and it's like just meant to be funny to on observation. Me. It takes a lot more than just saying, wow, this is cliched, to make meta humor funny. And like I was saying about the nudity, the first joke told by somebody who isn't Velma is... <laughs> Like, what? what's funny about this? That they're just being self-aware? Nearly every single joke is like this. Every- Thank you. But if the kids in every teen show ever can get through a brush with a deranged serial killer, so can I. Single- You possibly being gay is a huge deal. For one, it reduces me to cliched straight best friend. One. <laughs> Hearing that, I not only feel emotionally hooked, I understand the stakes of your journey, Velma. There aren't even punchlines to these. They're just characters stating that they exist in a fictional realm, and that's meant to be... Funny. Look, when you make meta comedy, you gotta do more than just break the fourth wall. You gotta have, you know, a joke to go along with it. Old School Clone High and the Lego Movie are two works with very similar meta-styled comedy, and they're both self-aware like Velma, but here's the thing, they actually tell jokes. Old School Clone High has comedic timing, characters make jokes that go beyond just what we're doing as cliches and dumb, the jokes flesh out characters and their individual personalities, it just doesn't feel so Another thing is that when it comes to meta humor in other stuff, like Deadpool, it's usually just one character who does the meta stuff. That creates this reverse fish out of water feel where the characters look at the one funny haha self aware character like they're crazy. That's the joke. That's the style. In Velma, it isn't a style. When every character makes the same fucking joke and remark every five it's seconds, it's a gimmick. Even in Clone High, when characters make meta jokes, they still feel like they're intrinsically tied to the universe. It feels more like a style to differentiate itself. Once again, in Velma, 
Every character makes the same joke in the same way. It's a gimmick. Also, on the topic of Clone High, certain jokes are just stolen from that show. There's a washing your hands joke that feels like that one JFK scene. Forgot to wash my hands! The random out of nowhere violence that's never brought up again. And not to mention the endless jabs at a high school drama cliches. Velma, at least to me, clearly took Clone High inspirations. However, Clone High uses meta humor to be more surreal, something like a Tom Green or an Eric Andre. And furthermore, Clone High used meta humor to separate itself, craft a new identity for itself. Velma, however, However, it does the opposite. It wants to be like Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty. This show doesn't even have an original bone in its body if it's just ripping off everything else that's popular. Wait, Velma isn't even an original concept. It just steals characters from Scooby Doo. Problem number two, the Scooby Dooby Doo. Ah, uh, finally, my knowledge of Scooby Doo, Night of 100 Frights, finally gets its use. I'm not exactly a Scooby Doo expert, but what the fuck does this have to do with Scooby Doo? At all. For most of the show, the classic Scooby Dooby Doo characters are recontextualized as high school drama show stereotypes. Poorly. Which wouldn't be the worst thing in the world had it been done properly, and with respect to the core structure of the group and vibe of the characters, you can change things around, as other shows have, like making Velma more bitchy and smug like they did in Mystery Incorporated. But unlike Mystery Incorporated, they made Velma in this show incredibly and entirely unlikable. Fred, on the other hand, is completely shat on in this show. They took what was originally a human golden retriever and turned him into a whiny, pathetic, rich white guy. Like, what the fuck? What does this have to do with a fucking Fred? So Shaggy is now Norville, which I believe is his first name, but I fucking refuse to call him that. And so far, he's been painted as a giant simp, literally doing everything he can to try and get Velma to notice him. And in the first episode, when he confesses his love for Velma while she's having a schizo attack, mind you, she literally just laughs at him. Honestly, the only member of the core cast who's even remotely similar to her older depictions is Daphne. She's still all girly and attractive and popular, but now she's a... Fucking drug dealer? What? And she's dealing drugs to scrape together money to try and find her birth parents because she's adopted, okay? Did they just throw fucking random shit at this character or something? What's going on here? Oh, yeah, and Scooby-Doo isn't in the show. Wait, so you couldn't figure out any way to make Scooby-Doo adult? Just have Scooby-Doo say fuck- Problem three, the characters suck massive a horse penis. On top of the characters being bad adaptations of their old characters, they're also just not good characters themselves at all. All of them were about as likable as, uh, Domsville, who isn't an easy target. All I can think of is J.K. Rowling, but everyone with half a brain already knows she's scum. Uh, the U.S. government? Not a person. Oh, how about Eve Gilmont? I don't know who that is. Oh, I got it. David Zaslov. Oh, I'm gonna be killing. Anyways, by that, I of course mean I literally hate all of them. None of them are enjoyable, and it feels as though Mindy Kaling wrote this with nothing but nihilism in mind with how cruel and awful these people can be. Daphne is straight up a mess, and I can't really feel for her because I just watched her stab a chick to death with a pen in gym class and have it not mentioned ever again like it's a Family Guy cutaway or something. Holy- I said earlier, Fred is a rich man-child who is a critique of, um, Rich people. Intentional? Yeah, sure. But he's also just really fucking generic. Oh, look at him. He can't cut his food. Oh, look, he's a misogynist. Oh, wow, Velma. What scathing critiques that I haven't seen a million goddamn times over? There's nothing unique or funny about Fred. He's a poorly written comic relief kind of antagonist. Norville is a petty and unengaging love interest. And I mean that in the loosest of terms. In general, he's just really boring. He doesn't bounce off of Velma or any other character in any meaning meaningful way. However, for some ungodly reason, the show decided to make him a punching bag too. Like I said already, his feelings are just constantly invalidated and laughed at by Velma. He's seen as feeble and weak, and truth be told, I kind of feel bad for him since even the writers are obviously bullying him. And when I say all the characters are this unlikable, I mean 
all of them. <laughs> Wait a minute, you said all the characters are likable? Even Velma? Velma especially. This is our main character. She's an overly smug and quirky protagonist. There are absolutely zero redeeming qualities about Velma in this show. She's a bitch to both her father and her friends, on top of the fact that she's just does awful shit for no reason. Like when Daphne and Velma are pitted against each other in a gym competition to see who's the least vulnerable. Don't ask, by the way. The scene is incredibly stupid, but something something Daphne kiss Velma, something something denial and confusion, something something romantic tension, whatever. So, to show that Daphne is more vulnerable than she is, Velma takes Daphne's diary and reads it out loud in front of the whole gym. Of course, people on the sides go, mental health isn't funny and get mad at her, but it's a fucking gag. It makes her even more unlikable. 90% of the show is like this. There is a lot of Velma doing or saying something entirely out of pocket and then immediately having it get pointed out. Yet she shrugs it off and or just goes entirely unpunished for it. Oh yeah, also, Velma is a body-shaming racist. The worst of this being when she shames Fred for having a tiny dong. Look, I ain't no go woke, go bro kind of person, but this is just fucking garbage. It's not funny, it's not likable, it just makes Velma an asshole. There are also characters like Velma's dad, his pregnant model girlfriend, Gigi, Daphne's parents, and more people who I had to literally search up on Google because I didn't remember any of them. I don't even think half of these characters are real, to be honest. They're given very little attention and development, and I kind of forgot about them. The whole thing just has this mean-spirited tone. There's nothing to connect with. There's nothing to like when all all the characters are assholes and or boring. The protag's a bitch, Norville is bullied so much I don't think the show wants us to like him, Daphne's as morally complex as a brick wall, Fred is patronizing, all these characters suck, and none of them are good. What's worse is that these characters aren't even given any wiggle room because the story they're put- Problem number four, the storyline sucks! Once again, we were only able to see the first four episodes. However, I, um... Can't say I'm impressed at all. For a murder mystery, there really isn't any intrigue or hook. It all just feels like it constantly deviates from itself and goes on these weird tangents. Hey, Dumsville, do you mind telling the audience what happens in the episodes we watch? What? Why do I have to do it? Because it's your video. Don't worry, Mama Butters is right behind you. I'd rather you be behind a moving train. Don't you mean it? <laughs> we then begin with a boring fucking monologue. Daphne tries to kill someone in a shower, Last of Us Part 2 style, and then Velma tries to to harm her. Why? I don't know. Never comes up again. But then we get our first victim. A girl named Brenda was murdered and her brain was removed by a serial killer. Gotta love the image of gore and near nudity in the same frame. It shows you exactly what this show's priorities are. We then get like 10 minutes of Velma complaining about how her and Daphne used to be friends. How her mom is missing. How much her parents suck. Blah, blah, blah. But then Fred shows up and finally the murder plot can happen again. They follow this up by having nothing else happen except of course for the hysterical writing. Velma then starts having panic attacks, which are displayed for laughs. But then it turns out that Velma's mom actually left because she couldn't stand her own daughter. Five years of jack shit later, Velma goes to Fred because she thinks he's the murderer. She then has a panic attack, but then it's instantly fixed when she laughs at Shaggy having a crush on her, thinking it's a joke. Oh my god, they got Bluebertine to write this show? Fred then gets arrested, but lo and behold, he isn't the murderer. Wait, that's it? Isn't this a murder mystery show based on Scooby-Doo, which is also a mystery show? There were like three scenes about the actual murder. Episode 2, Fred is arrested and Velma needs a file from Daffy to prove that Fred isn't the murderer. So they both start selling drugs. Okay. A bunch of nothing later, Velma realizes that Fred is innocent. However, during court, Fred goes to jail anyways by embarrassing himself. Okay, what happens next? That is what happens. Uh, that's the whole episode. What? Uh Huh? Oh no, actually there is one other thing. Velma has a panic attack and her and Daphne kiss and that's it. Isn't there a murder to be solved? In episode 3, a bunch of shit happens and by a bunch I mean fucking nothing. Velma and Daphne have that vulnerable competition mentioned earlier while Shaggy interviews Fred as a therapist and that's fucking it. Wasn't there a murder? In episode 4, the whole episode is about Velma turning a bunch of attractive girls ugly. Oh, and uh, Fred's freed from prison because of his rich family, meaning that arc is now over. 
very anticlimactically. Anyways, the girls, however, don't want to be ugly. Oh no, so Velma dresses up as a fucking monster for no reason. But then this bitch gives birth for no reason, so we get a bunch of animated 15-year-olds doing a sexy dance. Velma then rejects Fred and Shaggy meets a goth girl, and yeah. Wasn't there a murder? You see, the show wants to have its cake and eat it too. It wants to be serialized like Rick and Morty, but it also wants to have an overarching story. The issue is that shit like the murder of a girl are put off for comedy that isn't that funny. It doesn't help that the serialized shit itself isn't interesting or funny. The old Scooby-Doo show had mystery to it. Each episode was a new mystery. If Velma was that but with senseless violence, maybe it would be at least interesting from episode to episode with some kind of hook. But it's not. It's another boring, terrible adult animated comedy. The show is just meandering and aimless. It's just not entertaining. The show really doesn't know what it wants to be. It wants to be Rick and Morty, but it also wants to be Riverdale. Too bad the people putting it all together have only ever talked to aliens. Nothing about the story works. Yeah, granted the show isn't even all the way out yet, but it certainly isn't on any good footing so far. All this makes for a show that is either painfully unfunny or just kind of boring. Either way, it's completely unengaging. It's just too painful. Can we just finish this shit and call it a day? We got the video to 10 minutes. I think we can cash out now. CONCLUSION! Uh, yeah, the show is dog shit. I hope I get some ad revenue out of this. Speaking of ad revenue, why is this show successful? Is it the hate watching? Is that what it is? People are just watching the show to hate it, giving it money, and giving it attention. The thing is, the more people give this show attention, the more we're gonna get from it. This show was literally made to gain outrage. I mean, look at us. We're making a soulless cash grab video like the show for money. Dumbsville, can you stop making meta jokes? We need to not be hypocrites for our points to work. Oh, like I said, Butters, I am not above my own sins. Only God will judge me. Yeah, this is a show with a lot of attention and zero cultural impact. Nothing works. Everything sucks, and I fucking hate it. It's incredibly infuriating. All these random jabs, horrible cynical takes, it's just literally what right-wing extremists think people like myself are like, and only gives them more of an excuse to further the societal divide. As a writer myself, especially one attempting to showcase progressive messages, ideals, and morals in a well-structured manner, I feel as though I should be held to a high standard when it comes to the things I create. And I do hold myself to that standard, because it's incredibly important for people like me to make our voices heard, especially in a competent way. What Mindy Cowling has done here is not competent, smart, witty, or creative in any way. It's not held to any standard, it's soulless, it's cruel, and it's infuriating. Mindy Cowling should be ashamed of herself because all she's done is create a pile of hot garbage that will only serve to make things worse. Scooby-Doo deserves better than this. We deserve better than this. But it's kinda hard to get that message across when millions of people hate-watched this cynical garbage resulting in a second season being greenlit. If you watched this on HBO Max, know that this is literally your fault. Yeah, so true, so true. This show is really bad. Look, I am not the first to say it, and I will never be the last, but I will be the truest. This show is unfunny, vapid, and boring. Nothing works at all in this show. It's another dog shit adult animated comedy in a long range of dog shit adult animated comedy. Velma sucks and I hate it. And not over yet, unfortunately, but I have zero desire to watch the rest of the show. It's been shown to be a talentless piece of garbage, and all I feel is remorse for the animators who were forced to work on it. So what now? I guess we just dangle this until the audience begs us for part two. <laughs> Do you really want to go through more of that? I mean, hey, I, I want money. Won't they just get more attention that way? Look, if they can money launder, so can I. Fuck you in the lane you came with. Me and you ain't on the same shit. You ain't in my lane, bitch. Nah, all that shit in fifth. Rolly on my wrist. Ay, baby, you a son. I'm my only wish. I'm counting. Blue honeys. I'm too money. Ay, that my little bitch, you too lovely. Yeah, hanging up and calling me right back. Ay, baby, why you calling me like that? Yeah. Oh, what it is? Oh.
Oh, Didi, what the-